Have you ever had a time where you had to defend your honor? Well, if so, you'll probably remember it vividly because those will stand out in your memory. When I was in second grade, <clears throat> I remember I had gone to the supermarket with my mother, which didn't happen often, and um, we were in the frozen food section. And there was uh, a stack of uh, frozen pizzas. And so I was standing over these frozen pizzas and I was pretending to be a karate master. And I was going, as if I was slicing the pizzas with my bare hands. So I did that for a few minutes. And I turned around and I saw this girl that was in my class. Her name was Hillary. And uh, she, I, I kind of had a crush on her at the time, and I was so embarrassed. She was, wa she was looking right at me, pretending to be this karate master of frozen pizzas. And so uh, she giggled, and then she and her mom moved on. And I, for the rest of the day, I was just dreading seeing her the next day because I just knew she was going to ask me what, what, you know, what was going on. <clears throat> so sure enough. At school the next day she said what in the world were you doing with those pizzas and I had to defend my honor to uh, I probably came up with some ridiculous thing like I'd seen it in a movie or something I don't know but I had to defend my honor because I was I was embarrassed well we're reading through the book of Acts and <clears throat> we're up to chapter 11 and Peter is, uh, has to defend his honor in some ways. Not as much his honor, but his actions. He has to defend uh, and explain why he did something that um, for most Jews would be uh, just abhorrent. So if you haven't read chapter 11 of Acts, I'd encourage you to pause the video and read it. You can find it in the comment section there. And then uh, play the rest of the video. I've got a couple of thoughts for you. So if you're still watching, I'm assuming that means you've read chapter 11. So Peter is faced with this question. Like me, his question was not, what in the world were you doing with those pizzas? But it was, what in the world were you doing with those people? And so, as a Jew, you were expected to not go in the house of a Gentile, or to eat with them, or to, you know, fraternize with the enemy, you could say. But Peter had done it. Peter had spent time with these Gentiles. And so the first section of chapter 11 is devoted to a recap of what happened in chapter 10. Now, um, <clears throat> if you've been reading along with us, you will have noticed that this is the third time um, this concept comes up, the unclean and clean concept. So in the previous chapter, uh, Peter has the vision. Then he relays that vision and a message to the people at Cornelius' house. And here, finally, he, for the third time, relays that message uh, to the other Jewish believers. And so in literature, especially religious literature, when something is expressed three times, it means it's important. It means that it's, uh, it's something of value, it's something of fulfillment, something of... Um, you know, uh, well, those are good enough words. So, so we see this for the third time that he he re-expresses himself, and that's uh, that's a value to us. It's important for us to know. It's something that um, not only is going to be important in the Book of Acts, but be important in the history of the world because um, because basically what's going on here is religion no longer is based on works. I mean, that's the idea that the the ceremonial laws and the works that um, you know would make a man or a woman right before God it's no longer how a person is right before God and so it's important that we get this lesson and so it's the third time that they that he expresses it and then the next section is um, sort of what I think of as the finally we've gotten to the body the meat of, uh, of Acts. Not to say that the stuff that came before wasn't important, it was very important, but it was laying the groundwork for what we see in chapter 11. So the second section in chapter 11, we see a couple of places that the believers, remember they were scattered in chapter nine, 8, 8 I think, they were scattered at Stephen's 
uh, Stephen's uh, murder, his martyrdom, and they went all over the place. And now finally we're hearing what happened with them spreading out. <clears throat> and so it gives us a couple of places where they went, and one of them is Antioch. And so a group of believers is growing in Antioch. And so um, we find that Barnabas and Paul both... Uh, and Peter's involved too, but Barnabas and Paul go and spend a year with them. Um, and so this becomes uh, one of the first churches outside of Jerusalem, which is important because this is, this is the thrust, this is most of what Acts is going to deal with for the rest of the book, is building churches, uh, you know, growing pockets of believers around the world that will eventually grow into historical um, historically verified churches, places where there are now cathedrals and um, huge places of worship that had been there for thousands of years. And so, so now that the groundwork is laid, we begin to see these, um, you know, these pockets of believers. So, <clears throat> uh, as you go through your day today, um, it's probably, it's probably unlikely that you're going to go anywhere that you don't, if, if you're in the States, especially in Texas, it's unlikely you're going to go anywhere where there's not a church visible. There's churches on every corner, it seems like. And um, I was sitting with my dad last night uh, in, our, in our backyard as it rained, and we were talking about the idea that um, just like you can go on Ancestry.com, there is an, a, a spiritual ancestry that everybody has if they're believers. And so, um, you know, the, the people that Paul um, ministered to, they ministered to people and they got saved. And then the people that those people ministered to and so on and so forth. And so it's interesting to think that the churches that you see in your town have some kind of spiritual ancestry to those original churches that we see in the book of Acts. And the same is true of you and me, that we have a spiritual ancestry to one of the apostles, that somewhere along the line, one of the apostles' work, either their writing or their direct work, affected somebody, and that was passed down, 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 until it got to us. And so, <clears throat> um, it's interesting to think what your ancestry might be. So maybe that's something we could discuss in the comment section. Who shared the gospel with you? That would be an interesting, um, that'd be an interesting thing to hear. Who shared the gospel with you? And then um, who have you had a chance to share the gospel with? Uh, I think that would be fun to hear about. So that's our video for today. Sorry I've been pacing back and forth. I had coffee and it's really lovely out here. So I, I um, I, I like the feel of the wet grass on my feet, so um, I wanted to, to walk around a bit while we did this. But um, anyways, that's the video for today. Tomorrow we'll be looking at chapter 12 of Acts. I encourage you to read it, or you can wait and read it uh, with the video tomorrow. Um, if, you're, if you're following along with us um, and you're not getting tagged um, and you want to be tagged so that you can know when new videos come up, um, just hit like or comment or something so that I can see who is, um, who is connected to us. So um, it's gotten to where I'm not sure who all is watching. So I want to make sure that I'm not missing anybody. Alrighty. Well, that's, that's the video for today. Um, thanks for watching. And I guess we'll see you tomorrow.